Well, hello, my dear parishioners of Our Lady of the Woods here in Woodhaven, Michigan. It's that time for the weekly address. Um, here I am, and I welcome everyone to this moment of encounter with each other. Um, as we begin, I would just like to take this moment to remind you that we're celebrating today on November 30th, the Feast of St. Andrew, one of the apostles. He was the brother of Simon Peter. He was a fisherman, a disciple of St. John the Baptist. He was often, is often called the Protoclete, or the first call, because he's remembered as the first of the apostles to say yes to Jesus and his invitation to them. Um, it was said he was martyred in Greece uh, by being crucified on a cross in the form of an X. So he's honored as the patron saint of fishermen, fishmongers, various places, Austria, Greece, Russia, Scotland. I hear in Scotland it's actually a bank holiday today. Um, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Ukraine. And so he's very much part of our faith and still alive in different and real ways, whether we fully realize or notice that. But St. Andrew has that profound impact like each of the apostles in their own way. They have their subtle moments with us. And so I'd like to start with a prayer asking St. Andrew's intercession. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We humbly implore your majesty, O Lord, that just as the blessed Apostle Andrew was for your church, a preacher and pastor, so he may be for us a constant intercessor before you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, one of the things I liked, Pope Benedict um, the Sixteenth said once that uh, Andrew actually teaches us to follow Jesus with a certain promptness, to speak enthusiastically about him to those we meet, and to especially cultivate a friendship, a relationship with him, acutely aware that in him alone we can find the ultimate meaning of our life and death through Jesus Christ in the intercession of St. Andrew. So that's what I'm inviting you to ponder today as we begin this new week. I first want to um, hope and pray that you had a beautiful Thanksgiving last week. Um, I know they were mostly different, strange, um, not what we would have hoped for or planned in many ways, but I certainly hope you had taken a moment to actually be thankful, you know, that attitude of gratitude, um, even in the midst of our pandemic. So whatever way your thanksgiving manifested itself. I hope that we remember the beauty of being grateful for so many things. Um, this week now we um, have begun the season of Advent. We're back into a new church year. Christ the King Sunday was the last Sunday of our church year, and now we're in to a new church year, which began with Advent over the weekend. I hope you take time for Advent. Um, as you heard me last year, I love Advent. I love the longing. Um, even the music is a yearning. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and the ransom captive Israel. That beautiful kind of a yearning, a longing, a desire. It comes through in the beautiful prophetic voice of Isaiah through the prophet uh, John the Baptist. There's these wonderful moments that I hope and pray you'll take time with. Um, I hope you were able to get um, one of those blue books from the parish, or you can go online. There's all kinds of different um, Advent practices that you could take. If you're in a family, um, you know, here's my Advent wreath. But I'm hoping and praying. I remember when I was a little boy, um, we used to, whoops, they're all falling apart. That's okay, we got it. Um, it's a reminder that these candles can only stand firm if we live them. You know, the, the candle of hope and peace, the candle of love. And so, again, I think it, they fell for a certain reason to remind ourselves that each of those candles stands for something. And, um, you know, right now in the world and the pandemic, you know, peace could be toppling down and hope and joy and love. But let's put it back. But when I was a little boy, one of the things I used to remember is that we used to take from a, those little banquet pot pie tins 
We used to take those and we used to take four little birthday candles. We used to put them in Play-Doh and in the little pie tin, and then we would decorate a little green around it. So I do hope and pray that um, those of our families in the parish will take time to do a little Advent service with your children. Have them make an Advent wreath. Have them, and it doesn't have to be the three purple and one pink. Um, you use with what you've got. You might have four white candles, whatever it is. But I do encourage our families, even grandparents, you could do that virtually when you're talking to your grandchildren. You know, have your Advent wreath there. Say a little prayer with them when you're visiting with them on Zoom or on, you know, whatever you're um, encountering them on in the different social media. So Advent is a very important time. Um, I think that in our culture, we sometimes have brushed it aside. You know, Christmas is here and we forget about taking time to truly prepare. Don't get me wrong. I sang about it last year. Yeah, I sound like a Grinch, you know, Father Bob the Grinch. Um, but I, I truly believe this and I'm going to say it to you loud and clear. If you want to have a wonderful Christmas, you've got to have a wonderful Advent. I'll leave it at that. Um, the last thing, though, okay, I did lie a little there. I will say one other thing. There is a little service on our social media website for Olo, but you can you can Google them too, um, of an Advent wreath service for families. So it's on our social media of our parish. You can look it up, um, but you can also Google that. So Advent, very important. On my own update, um, I will be having surgery um, this Thursday, December 3rd. Um, Bishop Battersby uh, called yesterday to check in how I was doing. I really would like to get back to saying Mass next weekend. If everything went well, I might have been able to, but even Bishop Battersby and my family and the staff have all said, take this next weekend. Make sure everything's okay. So my plans, if they are aligned with God's plan, is to allow, um, I know um, the Archdiocese is, is right now going to look for someone to take this next coming weekend, the second weekend of Advent. But my plan, if it's aligned with God's plan, is to start saying the daily masses on Monday, December 7th. So if things go well, but you'll hear about it. If something really doesn't go well, um, you'll hear about it in time so that you won't show up here and there's no one here. But if things go absolutely well, and I hope you'll pray for me as I remember you, I have my daily mass kit here. I do my private masses, so all the mass intentions of the parish are taken and remembered and prayed for, okay? So pray for me as I pray for you, and especially on December 3rd, I would appreciate a prayer. December 9th, we'll have the announcement of our family of parishes. Um, I know December 8th, um, for the Immaculate Conception, we would have a 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Mass that day. Um, and then as we go along, just be aware of um, the Christmas Novena coming up on December 16th. Um, you, if you have the need for the Sacrament of Reconciliation, um, see me again starting on the 7th. I will listen to confessions um, after the daily Masses. You can make an appointment to see me. We still have two Saturdays from 3 to 4 um, for that after December 7th. And then on December, I think it's 17th. 17th. Yeah, December 17th. Mm -hmm. um, I will be in the church for an hour. We won't have a real service per se, but I'll be there and be able to listen to, for confessions. That So I still think you have a, you know, um, quite a few moments or opportunities. Uh, I would be looking at considering if you're going to come for Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. The Christmas Mass passes are going, you know, a little more and more. I know the 4 p.m. is now full. Now, don't forget, if you show up and it's full, you'll have to wait. And then there's a protocol. People who are waiting can be placed in the chapel. They can be placed into the gathering space or into the social hall. So just be aware of that. And please remember, you know, this year we have to be very just brotherly and sisterly. You may not get the spot where you always sit. But maybe that's God saying to you, I want you to sit in a new space for Christmas. So just be accommodating, be hospitable, be understanding. 
Um, I know the the challenge or the friction will be a little of those who don't come usually to the, to the parish and they show up and um, they'll just have to understand that there, if there's room and certainly there probably will be, um, but that room might be in the chapel, the gathering space or over in the social hall. So, you know, be, be understandable about that and, and let people know that you might think are coming or plan on coming and they only come once a year. So we have um, up till now, 94 available seats at the 7 p.m., 42 available seats at the 10 p.m., and on Christmas Day itself at the 10 a.m. Mass, there's 67 available seats. So just, um, you know, consider it, think about it. Um, they will be live streamed, some of the Masses, and um, it'll be on our social media which ones are live streamed. So if you're not comfortable yet or you're not coming or because of the, the spike and everything going on, um, you, you have to do what you have to do. Feel safe, be safe, and live stream. I think at this point, I've talked about reconciliation, uh, the family of parishes. Uh, we still have our staff monthly meeting, um, December 10th. So we meet once a month, we pray together, and then we talk a little. So I'm going to close at this time, unless Becky has reminded me about something else. No, we're good. I want to close with what I'd like to leave you known. You know, we have this coronavirus going around. Well, there's one called the Advent virus. Now, the Advent virus comes from a page called, um, I think it's www.appleseed.org. And uh, look for Christmas and Advent quotations. But it's interesting, the Advent virus. Warning, Advent virus. Be on alert for symptoms of inner hope, peace, joy, and love. The hearts of a great many have already been exposed to this virus, and it is possible that people everywhere could come down with it in epidemic proportions. Sound familiar? This could pose a serious threat to what has up till now been a fairly stable condition of conflict in the world. What are some signs and symptoms of the Advent virus, a tendency to think and act spontaneously rather than on fears based on past experiences, an unmistakable ability to enjoy each moment, a loss of interest in judging other people, a loss of interest in interpreting the actions of others, a loss of interest in conflict. And um, on a side note, you know, it's funny because people can't come into the office right now. They're not a able to come, you know, just off the street. They, they can call and we can deal with all kinds of uh, different issues over the phone or through emails and that. But there's still those people who like conflict, who even though they can't get into the office, still try to provoke conflict. And maybe, and I pray that they get the Advent virus to have a loss of interest in conflict. Um, it's like, unfortunately, for the coronavirus, uh, even a couple of my own friends right now have the coronavirus and they tell me about the loss of taste and smell. And so here I hope it's a loss of interest in conflict. The Advent virus is the loss of ability to worry. The Advent virus is frequent, overwhelming episodes of appreciation. The Advent virus is contented feelings of connectedness with others in nature. The Advent virus is frequent attacks of smiling. Hello, can you put on that smile? Not the fake one. The fake one can be nauseating. Put on the genuine one and you're good to go. The Advent virus is an increasing tendency to let things happen rather than make them happen. And the Advent virus is an increased susceptibility to the love extended by others, as well as the uncontrollable urge to extend it. So as it says in this email, please send this warning out to all your friends. This Advent virus can and has affected many systems. Some systems have been completely cleaned out because of it. And so I hope that any of those systems that are negative or destructive as we prepare for Christmas, the Advent virus can totally clean them out. And of course, I always close with this, a little part of humor. Um, this is a family and it's funny. It looks like the father is there and the children are all standing around with mommy and they're gonna light the advent wreath. And the father's getting ready to re, uh, light it. The one boy is getting ready to read it. And the littlest one's trying to get towards the fire. 
And I love what the little girl says on the side. If we were really patient, we'd wait till Jesus' birthday to light his candles, right? And I just love that little emphasis that the children are, you know, it's almost like the Advent wreath reminds them of Jesus' birthday candles. Patience. Patience is a virtue. It's also a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So I have a beautiful week, this first week of Advent. And um, pray for me and I'll pray for you. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and a ransom captive is Israel.